Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So in this video we're going to do a, I guess a maker showcase. Um, I'm going to show you guys a bunch of different things that uh, Sergey Rogovitz has made over at Extreme Addiction. Um, he actually sent me this uh, behemoth of a knife to check out and kind of play with. And I definitely need to get back to him. So um, yeah, let's get into it. So a couple of things here in front of me. Um, this is my Model 17. He made me... Oh, I don't know, sometime back in 2017, as I recall. It was, yeah, it was a new model for 2017. This is number one. Number zero was the prototype. Um, he also made this really cool Zippo. You guys have seen a lot of modified Zippos over the years. Um, I don't know that Zippo is quite a fan of modified Zippos, but a lot of people are still making them. Uh, he made a really cool spinning top that he sent me, I think with this knife. And then I ordered this pen from him a couple months ago. I've never had a custom pen before, but you know, I was certainly intrigued by the notion. Uh, so this is a custom pen that he made. And then um, I asked him to make me a wallet that matched my Model 17. And as you guys can see, the laser work is identical. So yeah, so let's get into it. Talk about some of the different stuff. Um, I've been a fan of Sergey's work for quite some time. Um, as I mentioned in other videos, he is a second generation jewelry maker from from Russia. He came over as a kid at some point, but he still has a super thick Russian accent. Uh, he sounds like a bad guy in a movie, like a Bond movie or something. But he's, he's a nice guy, and I think his work is really, really good. So aside from this stuff, he also does some pretty cool photography. He sent me a calendar when I ordered the pen, and as you guys can see, the pen and the Zippo's in there and stuff too, so. Um, yeah, his photography is good, but it's just interesting to see a maker who has uh, so much diversification. So he makes jewelry, he makes knives, he makes pen, he does leather work, he modifies Zippo's, he made a spinning top, he does photography, he prints calendars. Um, I mean, he's really all-inclusive. And it's kind of cool when you find a maker that you really like, and they make so many different things that you can carry and use with you, um, kind of like a set. And I know that sounds weird, but it's people who, who buy things a little bit on the higher end. Um, I think that they can commiserate with me on that at the very least. So, you know, obviously I've, I've acquired a, a number of different things from him, purchased a couple of things over the years, and um, he's let me borrow a couple knives over the years as well. So I have a really good feel for his work. Um, but let's look at some of the stuff in detail. Again, um, very wide skill set, very detail orientated, and everything he does is manual except for the laser work. Um, now, I don't know if some of the things, you know, like this, uh, you know, this sword and, you know, gear and stuff and the little knock, I'm not sure if he made those by hand or, you know, if he just welded them to the Zippo and then colored the Zippo and so forth. I forgot to ask him about that. Um, but I know everything he makes is by hand, you know, um, like the pen was made on a manual lathe and so forth, or, you know, at least some of the various parts, but uh, brass, copper, titanium, bolt-action mechanism. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus here on all the detail work. Titanium uh, pocket clip that he gave kind of that uh, flame Anno coloration. So you can see there's the mechanism for the bolt action and then it's got a titanium cap. Uh, so while we've got it out, let's look at the weight on this thing. This is a heavier pen as you guys can imagine. You know, obviously with all you know the copper and the brass, that's some heavy material. So what is that? 3.7 ounces. So, you know, obviously a hefty pen. Um, you know, long-term writing, um, something this heavy, probably not the best idea. Um, but for short-term writing, you know, signing checks, um, making quick notes, things like that, which I typically tend to use pens for, uh, works just fine. And again, I mean, it's custom, so um, obviously it's, it's a little bit more than functionality when you're buying, you know, custom-made pens and things of that sort. It's a very impressive piece, and the people that I've handed it to, they have to stop and look at it. Um, before they can use it, and that's always kind of fun to see their eyes glitter a little bit. Um, so that's the pen. Show you guys up close some of the other stuff here. Look at the knurling. 
I think that's a stainless steel ball in there. Uh, spins really well. You know, I don't collect spinning tops, but it's cool to have one, you know, and then again, it's part of a set, which I find interesting. A lot of you guys might think is over the top, but you know, I buy what I like. And then the matching wallet is really cool. Now, obviously this doesn't have enough uh, space for like a full wallet swap, um, but I'm gonna use this for business cards. And I, I think that'll be a really nice use for it. And I love that it matches, you know, my Model 17 that he made, and that was by request. So, you know, if you want to get a knife and a matching wallet, he makes he makes other wallets too, um, passport books, some other things. Um, so it's not just like a small card holder. He makes a number of different wallets. But, you know, to me, it's really cool to have a matching set. Um, you know, I dig it. So there's an up close of the Zippo lighter. Uh, again, you know, I don't I don't typically carry a lighter, but I like having it. So and let's take a look at the Rhino. Um, really interesting knife. Um, we'll talk about this one here. So as you guys can see, this thing is huge. It is completely over the top, and that's really the purpose of a knife like this. So we'll weigh it just so that you guys can all have a brief heart attack and run straight to the comments to tell me how heavy it is. So, uh, 9.23 ounces. That is one heavy knife. And why is it so heavy? Well, the quarter inch blade stock here is certainly one reason why this is so heavy. This is CPM 10V, um, very high performance tool steel. There we go, quarter inch blade stock. Overall thickness on the knife is uh, 0.7, we'll call it point, well, 0 0.69, 0 0.7. And then, you know, that huge copper back spacer, obviously that adds a, a fair bit of weight to it. 3D milled pocket clips, stainless steel lock insert. Now he has recently upgraded to ceramic bearings, um, which honestly I was quite happy. Now I'm in mean, this model, he uses 440C stainless bearings. And they work pretty well, but I feel like the ceramic in this one are just a tad bit smoother. Um, it, it's a very subtle difference, and some of you guys might say, well, the blade's so heavy, you know, that's probably making you think it's smoother, but no. I've, I've handled enough knives of enough thickness, and I, I can tell a difference, so I'm glad he's upgraded to ceramic bearings, because I do prefer them. So, here's uh, the Rhino in the open position. Warncliffe style blade, Spyderco uh, opening hole, super thick, super overbuilt. Um, has a Cerakote finish, and initially I didn't really like the Cerakote finish, um, but I have to say having it in person, it has grown on me uh, quite a bit. So, And surprisingly enough, this knife is actually comfortable in the hand. Um, which again, you know, it's you wouldn't think with it being that thick, but I mean, it's, it's pretty comfortable. You've got a number of comfortable grips on it, and this blade is, um, you know, shaving sharp. The blade itself comes down below the handle, so yeah. I mean, again, at 9.23 ounces, at quarter inch thick blade stock, I'm not going to convince anyone that this is like a practical choice for everyday carry. This knife appeals to people who this knife appeals to. I mean, if if you're someone who buys like extremely overbuilt knives. I can certainly recommend the quality on this one. Um, the fit and the finish, the fact that everything is done by hand. Um, you know, the spider hole has been nicely, uh, they chamfer he chamfered the edges so nothing sharp on it. Lockup is rock solid. Um, so I mean, again, if you're someone who buys overbuilt knives, I mean, I would take his work over quite a few other people's work. Um, because, again, I know the fit and finish is solid. It has a stainless steel lock insert. And, yeah. So there's his signature. Apparently that's the model number. And blade steel. You know, CPM 10V. But just an interesting piece. So, it's, it's so heavy. Um, I carried this one in the pocket twice. And, you know, the... The width isn't necessarily an issue for me, the thickness is an issue, and at, at 0.7, you notice this thing in your pocket. So again, this is absolutely not for everyone, 
but for those who like overbuilt knives and who buy overbuilt knives, um, definitely check out the Rhino. Um, he primarily sells to dealers, but he does take custom orders. So I mean, you could you could go crazy, you go full like Timascus and like some sort of damascus steel blade, and just have an absolute beast in the pocket. So look how clean the backspacer is. Typically on these uh, the edges here, you can usually see inconsistencies on handmade knives, especially on the backspacer, and. It looks flawless. Again, it looks machine done, <clears throat> even though I know it's not. I mean, he posts pictures of, of his workshop and working and so forth. So, two stop pins, one for the open, one for the closed. But yeah, comfy for uh, such a massive knife. So, anyways, I thought it'd be fun to kind of shoot the breeze, show you guys some of the different stuff that Sergey does. Um, I know at some point I will end up with another model from him. Um, this one, the 17, has been my favorite model to date of all of his models. Um, although he does have, I think he only works with maybe like one or two models at a time, and then he'll go to different models. Uh, but this one is by far my favorite um, of everything that he's produced so far. But anyways, I'll put a link to his, you know, his Instagram or his website down below if you want to go check him out. Again, my experiences with him have all been very positive. Um, obviously, he lets me borrow knives to play with, but you know, when I when I bought from him, seamless transactions, great communication, everything shipped in a timely manner. So, from my personal experience, I only have good things to say about Sergey and uh, the quality of his work. So, um, yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Um, you know, if you've own a knife from Sergey or have in the past, you know, put your experience down in the comment section below. Let other people know what you think. And um, yeah, more videos to come, more custom videos, more production videos, um, well, of the knives, that is, and maybe some other random stuff. So thanks so much for watching. Take care.